Each and every one of us were created by God to live in a relationship with God. It turns out that the God of it all is all about love, a love that reaches out. You see, at the beginning, God and man were together, but because of man's mistakes, sin entered the world and separated them both. Our pride, greed, selfishness, it causes a barrier between ourselves and a perfect God. And so for a people who needed saving, God sent a saviour. Jesus came and he walked on this earth in order to remind us how to love again. And then he stretched out his arms wide upon a cross and he died to deal with our selfishness. BC never ended with a funeral. It all started with the resurrection. Because three days later, he rose again, he conquered the grave, he defeated death. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, if you're looking for a life of meaning, of purpose, then I am the way. Maybe you've got some questions or you want some more information, and if you do, you can respond here. Well, praise the Lord. Um, I came across a teaching that is not quite correct. And I'm going to do everything I can. And it's correct, but it's not full. It just kind of touches the outside or the tip of the iceberg. And um, so... Let me share something with you about casting demons out in Jesus' name. Beloved, your instructions are vague and good. Beginning. But there is the meat of the several subject matters that you raised that were left out. The evidence that we have for the literal blasphemy of Holy Spirit comes to us before Lord Jesus explained that all manner of sin except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. He didn't say that blasphemy of the gospel will not be forgiven. He did not say blasphemy of anything else other than Holy Spirit. You blaspheme Holy Spirit, you're not going to be forgiven. Prime example is, now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons, Matthew 12, 24. Calling the work of Holy Spirit as being from Satan or demons is literally blaspheming in the work of God and Holy Spirit. But in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, it says, they, now, mind you, they were the apostles or the disciples at that time. They weren't apostles yet. The disciples at that time said, Well, when are you going to bring your kingdom? When are you going to do your thing here on the earth? And he says, It's not for you to know the days or the seasons which are in Father's authority. But you will soon receive Holy Spirit. And when you do... When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive the dunamis, the power to be able to witness about me through the furthest most parts of the earth. And then he ascended up into heaven. Rejecting salvation in Christ is not blaspheming Holy Spirit. Dying in that rejection, rejection causes you the same results as if you did blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's a place in the lake of fire. We read about the lake of fire in Revelation chapter 20. The direct prime example of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is to call God's work or His work as coming or being done by the demonic of this world. 
calling, speaking in other uh, now calling, speaking in other tongues as the spirit, spirit gives utterance and saying that it is satanic speaking and not God is another example of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. In other words, if you're calling the speaking of in other tongues demonic, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit, especially if it is actually Holy Spirit that is causing this person or is behind this person speaking in other tongues. The only way that you're going to know whether or not it was Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues or in demonic force is if you're actually in the gift of discernment of spirits. Not discernment, which is carnal, but discernment of spirits. That's a gift. It's one of the nine gifts that you get. The revelation gifts are word of knowledge and word of wisdom and discernment of spirits. And so it's up to us to be able to be in Holy Spirit, to be utilizing the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which we read in chapter 12 of the book of uh, 1 Corinthians and 14. But you've got to be able to be used in these gifts in order to be able to say, if you were just spouting off, oh, that's Satan that's speaking, you're actually ignorantly blaspheming Holy Spirit. The speaking against the message of the gospel is not a sin that is unforgivable. You can speak against the message of the, uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ all you want if you die without receiving the Lord and changing your heart and being uh, reconciled back onto the will and real things of God. Then you're headed for the same place that people that are blaspheming Holy Spirit and people that are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you have a place in the lake of fire. It's not different levels of salvation. When you get saved, they're all saved. There are different positions in, the, in salvation. There are different authorities in salvation, but there's not different levels. You got your, your hierarchy, you got your angels, you got your uh, three be three living beings. They're, those are awesome. Um, you got all the angels. You got the twenty four elders. Those are the authorities, the powers thereof. And then you got your lower authorities. You got your apostles, your prophets, your pastors, your teachers, and your evangelists. Those gifts are not going to stop. I don't think even the new in the new uh, world doesn't say it does, but who knows? You see, if we're speaking against the gospel, that sin is on me if I'm doing that. But if I do not repent, yes, I go to the lake of fire in the end. Yet if I repent, God is just and able to save that which is lost. Now if I say that the devil is doing what is actually being done by God, I am blaspheming Holy Spirit. There is no gray area in this teaching. And as far as casting out demons in Jesus' name, here's the Great Commission. He appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Unbelief and hardness of heart causes us to reject the will and word of God. Hardness of heart and unbelief. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had been had he after he had risen. You got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that God did in fact raise him from the dead and then you're saved. Go into all the world, he said, and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. 
they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Matthew 16, verses 14 through 18. Again, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who believes not will be condemned. Again, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does, does not believe will be condemned. One more time. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he that does not believe is already condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means harm them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. One more time, these signs will follow them who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not harm them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. One more time. And these signs will follow them who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing or poison, it shall not harm them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. I want you to please note that the teaching that I'm sharing with you is not marred by anger, but rather in love. If I did not love you all, I would not have... I'd have just let this go. I'd have come across this uh, post and I'd say, eh, no big deal. But there are things that are necessary to be shared with you as my brothers and sisters in Christ. If I didn't share it with you, it would be, this would be held against me as I'm standing before the white throne of God. Now, the repetition that I've just shared is a, based on progressive learning. The more times that I read, see, or hear, I learn it. You see, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That is exactly why I just made this video. With all my green screen behind me not set up, with a half of my office just put together, I just got a really cool desk and stuff, and I'm getting ready to do exactly what I'm doing this time. Watch this. I didn't stutter in what I shared. I'm certain of what I'm saying. This is not a if, and, or maybe, could be, might be situation. We are living in the end times. It's important and imperative that the things that we share are full enough for all, everybody to understand and to get faith by. If it's only half done, if you spent all those hours putting all those explanations, but you don't give the fullness of the teaching, understanding gets lost in the translation. We need the end of everything so that we can go, oh, 
Oh, that's how it is. Watch this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And these signs will follow them that believe. Watch this. Those who believe are saved, but those who do not believe are condemned. These are the things that we are supposed to believe. Jesus said, and these signs will follow them that believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in other tongues, taking up serpents or drinking any deadly thing and having no harm come to them, laying hands on the sick and the sick recover. There you go. Casting out demons, tongues, serpents, deadly poison, and laying hands on the sick. These signs will follow them that believe, not just apostles, not just evangelists, not just pastors or teachers. These signs will follow them that believe. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. My name is Jerry Lee Stencil Jr. and I love you very much. Have an awesome rest of the day. Look forward to sharing with you in the future. Talk to you later.